Welcome. Oh, you can't We're see late. It's my fault. That was my fault, too. It, there's a lot of faults to go around here. We'll just say it's everybody's fault. Welcome, everybody. It is January 8th. This is Sunday, and this is the Sunday show, a show where theists and atheists get together on calls and talk, and then annoying people try to jump into the live chat and have their own little show but not call in because they're pretty cowardly. Uh, and then whine about, like, well, you won't have just a written debate with me back and forth. That was what was happening before the show. Because you want to be able to handle a written debate, and I am literally showing up anonymously and have shown you no reason to trust me with a platform, and yet here I am. Uh, and so, yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> this is, it, 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 it's, it's going to be a fun day. We already have some calls lined up. I think we have at least one line open. We're having some issues with call screening, so we may have to do some things on the fly as we do it if they don't get resolved. But for the moment, uh, we've got some calls ready to go. I want to say at the beginning of the show, because I keep forgetting to mention it during the show, and also the beginning is the best time, if you are interested in a future uh, podcast version of any show from the line, the number one way you can achieve that is by supporting on Patreon. One of the first priorities, once Patreon support has garnered enough, is for us to hire uh, an audio engineer or producer to be able to put that together well, because, fun fact, just moving a YouTube to a podcast is a difference in audio quality that people notice, and if you just do it straight across, they don't listen because it sounds like shit in comparison. When you're audio only, you got the headphones in. I don't know. It's it's not it's not good. But anyway, so that's uh, the number one way. It's support us over on Patreon. There's a link down in the description. Welcome, Matt Dillahunty. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm watching chat. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in chat. I want to acknowledge a couple things. One of them is that I told some people I was late because I was sorting rats, and... Um, uh, we had an individual uh, who thought they were being very clever, and in fact they were saying, you're a rat, you aren't, you're a rat. You aren't. Yes, I was not quite sorry. I was sorting them by weight uh, at this particular point. Dargendorf said the show's late, so unprofessional, fire your producer. That's um, true. I, I, I'm down with that. Uh, <laughs> except that if there wasn't a producer, the show wouldn't be on at all. <laughs> like, I would have forgotten and been downstairs. Uh, so good deal. And uh Luna Dansko says that brazil is having a january 6 coup right now yeah evidently uh i only saw a brief news article before i went back to work and that was the bolsonaro acolytes are trying to overthrow the government yeah it doesn't bode well for the next election and what happens if uh it's like there's no good outcome either the democrats will win and then it's still just just moderate really that is going to run the country but then also whatever the January 6th version 2 is going to be in America, uh, yeah. or Republicans will win, and I don't think I need to explain why that one will suck. I think I'm going to get chat things real quick. Uh, Jared Jerber Fuller, who evidently I was monumentally rude to, according to somebody else, but not according to Jared, uh, said, Well, rats. And uh, somebody else says, I'm bald. That's perfectly uh, understood. And Cyberhex wants to know what's the over under for a manual today. So, well, uh, is it's what a done deal. What are we asking? Are we asking the over-under on whether or not a manual will call or whether or not a manual will successfully convince us of a theistic argument? Um, yeah, the, the over-under is zero. Yeah. And, and so I'll take the over. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually willing to just jump straight to that because I, I, I'm probably so, going to take it away that a manual's not expecting. Uh, so we have I, a I'm manual. Gonna, I'm gonna, let's do this. Let's do it this way. Since Emmanuel and I don't always do well. I'll just sit back here quietly and take down notes to see if I can calmly and quietly come up with very specific questions that might lead us toward clarity. Let's let's see if we can start this new year right. I think you don't know. I, 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 I have different plans for the call, but we'll try. Emmanuel, first of all, are you here? Yes, uh, I am here. Okay, good. So here's can you the, hear me perfectly? I, yeah, right now you're fine. I heard you had issues earlier on uh, on one of the shows you called into, but you're good right now. Uh, Emmanuel, okay. I, ha I, I have to ask. I know that you called Talk Heathen earlier today. Uh, I believe you... And here's the question I, I have for you, because one of two things I think is happening, and I want you to identify which. One, you're not good at using Google, so you have these thoughts in your head, and you don't bother, because I've had now, like, a dozen experiences with you and heard you on even more calls than that. You don't bother to just Google your own argument and see how other people's engaged it, ever. I feel like that's not ever happening. So you are calling us, asking us to do what Google should be doing for you. And, sh and, and I'm not even saying you couldn't engage in the gods of a gaps 
argument that would make you seem reasonable, as in, oh, I at least get why this guy thinks this. But the thing is, is I've taken your call so much that I know what you're about to say is going to be the most cliche, basic versions in defense of the arguments of God of the Gap. So I think option one is, you're bad at using Google, you don't want to do it, and you think it's a better use of time to call us, and let us do your Googling for you. Or two, there's something you think you get out of being a sort of unofficial, always calls in co-host on this show, and maybe you have a thought in your head that if even one person who's listening thinks, well... You know, Emmanuel might have gotten shut down, but I still like his message and his, and his proselytization. And, and that there's something going on where you think this is some type of missionary work. Because I truly cannot conceptualize a way where with the nature of the calls you've come in with, that you actually believe, I guess option three, that you are good at debating this and you are showing anybody the truth of anything. So you tell me which one it is. Or if I, if there's some other option, I, I, I'm really Emmanuel. What I'm desperate for is an answer to the question: What is the fucking point of us doing this again? Okay, so yeah, I would say none of those are the reason why I keep calling yeah, into this agnostic, yeah, I'm fine. skeptic shows. I'm on the call, so deep down, what I believe is I don't have a lot of time to be in this body, so. I think I'm I have on a calling show. Time, uh, very less years, you know. So that's why I'm trying to give out my argument because I don't have I don't think I have more time. Or a skeptic show. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a deep down what I believe in. Which is you want to use the oh, time you have on this earth. So. Not to call, because you've already said you can't change your mind, right? You've already acknowledged that there's nothing we no, can say. I, I, that would change your mind about Christianity, you're in and nothing's going to change it. So you're not calling to have an honest conversation or debate, right? No, no, no. I'm trying to have an honest debate. I want to really know your point of view because I'm kind no, of... No, no, no. But I don't care if you want to know my point of view. I want to know whether or not your point of view is changeable with evidence. I don't care if you just want to hear changeable. what I have to say. It, it's changeable. But, but, my, my, but we'll try. So the God of the Gap sure. theory is a good argument. Why? Let me, well, hang on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Amen. Sorry, right. Manu. Um, let's say you had some money that you wanted to invest. Okay? Yeah. Yes. And I, I wrote a piece of software that would make stock tips, give you stock tips. And if I showed you that this piece of software had never given a good stock tip, a stock tip that made money, but had once or twice or several times produced a stock tip that lost money, would you want to use that tool? Uh, absolutely not. Abs absolutely not. It's great. So when we have a gap in our knowledge, God of the gaps is this position of saying, hey, we don't understand how we did it. So we're justified in saying God did it. But in the entirety of human history, every time we've tried by saying God did it, either that has been proved wrong and it was something else, or it hasn't yet been proven correct. And so God, the God of the gaps, is identical to the piece of software that you said you would absolutely not use because it has never been demonstrated that it got the answer right but it has been demonstrated that it got the answer wrong. Why on earth would you say that the God of the gaps is a good thing and the thing that is directly analogous to us as a stock tip is something you would never use? Okay, so, so I think there's a difference between a theory and a fact. So God of the gaps there is, but can't what do you have to do with what I asked? Oh, so I would agree that what you uh, I absolutely agree with what you just said. You know, God of the God, yeah, gaps. Yeah, can God of the gaps. No, uh, no, I'm not because I think it it makes a you know it, even though it's not a fact and we cannot use it as an evidence. I think we could just like it makes a lot of sense. It gives a lot of confidence. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I'm I'm really. 
really desperate here because I, I thought about it and I came up with an analogy. And you understood that if you were trying to invest your money, the tool that never demonstrated that it could get it right, but has demonstrated that it could get it wrong, is something you would never use. But when you're trying to invest your belief, you're willing to use a tool that has never demonstrated that it got it right, but has demonstrated that it got it wrong. You are engaged in a very special yes, form, a very special pleading, where you, you exercise reason on investing your money, and you throw reason out the window and use the exact same unreliable tool, methodology, when it comes to understanding the rest of reality. How, how can that make sense? Yeah, it's just that, you know, uh, Matt, I think, uh, you know, what's on the line, what, what's the other side of the line if I did not believe in God? And let's say I don't believe in God exists, or let's say I don't think, you know, the Christian God exists. What's on the line is like eternal punishment, right? So, no, if sir, it, no, if that, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. What's on the line is the one and only life that you know you have. You don't know if there's an eternal anything. You don't know if there's an eternal punishment. What's on the line is living this life right. Do you give a shit whether or not your beliefs are true? Uh, I, I, I do. I, I, I do okay. care about it. Stop. 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 It's a yes or no question. If you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you should use the best methodology to determine what you should believe, correct? Yes. Why would you then say that the God of the gaps, which is not the best methodology to, to, to understand reality, it's never proven to be right, and it has many times proven to be wrong, so it cannot be the best tool for understanding reality. How can you simultaneously say that you care about whether or not you, what you believe is true? and that you're willing to go with God of the gaps, which does not have any demonstration of any truthful reliability. <sighs> uh, it's because the people that I think are very factually correct or people that I think are really smart and intellectual have used the God of the gaps and I've read their books. No, they fucking that have. Matter. no, they fucking haven't. No, that, is the, that is the stupidest thing I've heard. I mean, the smart people are not using unreliable method mechanisms. Smart people aren't, I mean, yes, yeah, smart people can make mistakes, but when you say the smartest people use this, that's just not fucking true. Yeah, yeah uh, I can give you an idea. No, sir, no, sir, I'm still, if you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you should use the most reliable methods for determining those beliefs. And you are sitting here arguing that there's a completely unreliable method that has never demonstrated any reliability and that you're fine with it because you think smart people have used it. How do you know what a fucking smart person is? Uh, I mean, they, they are, for example, I know people who have a very deep knowledge on physics and a deep knowledge on theology, history, that have used the same argument. Uh, that, that is similar to the guy. I don't yeah. care. I don't care whether, whether or not you find people who you think are smart who've used it. The issue is, is the method reliable? And you've already admitted that it's not. No, it's not, actually. But the reason why I believe in God is uh, because of the gap. Emmanuel, I'm going to pause it. Here's the thing, man. We've now given you 10 minutes, which is about 8 minutes more than I intended to. Uh, uh, I'm not mad at you, man. I just, it, it, it literally, I, I had this sort of what the point question at the beginning. And I'm sitting and listening and going, Matt and I have both made God of the Gaps videos. You could have typed in Matt Gillespie, God of the Gaps, or Jimmy Snow, my God of the Gaps. You'd have found our videos, and you would have realized why the things you said today are stupid. And maybe made your God of the Gaps argument better. And then you came out with Pascal's Wager, both of which we've made videos on. And this is what I was saying, is you are an incompetent Googler. Because at the end of the day, I think you're just here to waste time and slightly proselytize. Or it's something you enjoy or it's entertaining. And I don't really want to yeah. take... It's not personal, man, because I don't hate you. Sometimes I just enjoy, enjoy yeah. doing our call. But I do care yeah. about my audience, and I feel like we are wasting their time with bottom, yes. I don't even think it takes Matt or I. I think virtually any person who's been a skeptic for about 45 minutes can put holes in your arguments and handle your call. So please engage with my audience and us with a little bit more, I dare say, respect by actually going and doing the homework and not saying stupid things in defense of already bad arguments. Because even the people who call in for 
he dresses them up better and is prepared for some level of argument back. Uh, and then we point out that this is still God of the Gaps. And you're literally thinking that intellectuals are saying the phrase God of the Gaps like it wasn't created as an insult. That phrase is, a, is degrading. Like it's not a phrase that... I don't, I don't know how else to It is it. literally the name of a fallacy, essentially. Right. And it, it, it is, you might as well be saying, oh, I think arguments from incredulity are sound. You, you, you can't. Now, you, I don't care if you think that. It is factually incorrect. And God of the Gaps is what we just use to describe when someone, with no justification, ascend, attempts to insert a God in a gap in our knowledge without any not be reasonable. It can't. It is impossible for it to be reasonable. And the fact that you don't understand this disqualifies you from discussing this stuff about because you cannot simultaneously say you care about what's true. You recognize that this tool in any other context would be not reliable, and then say, "But in the God thing, I'm going to go with it." That doesn't fucking work. You are in a state of cognitive dissonance. You are you are going to lose your mind trying to reconcile things that are irreconcilable. I'm done talking. Yeah, sure. Okay. Emmanuel, I'm going to give you one little response here and basically say, I'm going to go and do the work and I'm going to put effort in. And I'm not going to call your next week or two of shows because it's going to take me time to make a good argument. Because here's, here's what I'm going to tell you, Emmanuel. If I see you calling any atheist call in show for two weeks, I won't get you on this show. That's all right, because he, he can call those other shows. No, I, I'm saying I won't take him if he calls those other shows, because he's not doing the work if he's doing it. This is a general type of work. If Matt decides to take you, Matt can take you. I won't take you, because people tell I me... I might take today. People tell me, exactly. Yeah, people tell me when you're calling in these other shows. So I'm going to tell you this. If you don't take two weeks off to get better at this and come with a, a, a fucking argument that makes any sense, you're not getting on this show. All right, Emmanuel, go ahead. You got your last words, and we're letting you go. Okay, so uh, I will, uh, I will, first of all, I don't believe in God because of the gap of the gaps, but my personal experience... Uh, that, I did not say we're going to start the argument over. I said you can say goodbye, basically, and acknowledge whether okay. or not you heard what I just said. Okay, I've heard what you just said. Great, thank, thank you, you Emmanuel. Cool. Okay. I think that's entirely fair, because... We've already been letting him on virtually every show, and at this point, we're either going to keep wasting people's time or he's going to get better at it. That's, those are the options. Uh, this is an interesting call. We're going to talk to Rich in Oregon, who uh, said he is functionally atheist, but uh, well, I'll let you explain it. You're a theist and an atheist. Yeah, sure. I, oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm pulling four years out from the same surgery you just had. Um, awesome. I'm doing well. I'm glad you're doing well too, sir. Yep. Yeah, it's not like I got Parkinson's now. Anyway, uh, I that, that one you no surgery for, but. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I was reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he uh, went to the guy with the gaps team, Tim Penn, and his 1943 book. Uh, the anyway, he was talking about a religionless Christianity where I can live in that out as a kind of functioning as an atheist, but philosophically I kept this nagging thing in the back of my head that maybe a God out there, but you know, we're supposed to live our lives as grown ups taking responsibility for our own lives as if there's no God. And that's what Paul Hopper wrote just before he was This my retarded brother. What's that? Are you saying you've adopted the same position? What is the question? They're similar. Uh, I hate him. I hate him. Mankind has grown up. And does not have a God hypothesis anymore. And, yeah, but Bonhoeffer was still obsessed, but Bonhoeffer was still obsessed with the Christ. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, and I'm I not going to be a disgusting, repulsive figure that I have no reason so to build my life around. Um, so I have no interest in Bonhoeffer's. You know, when he says, oh, it's religion, it's Christianity. Well, that's a non sequitur. It's, it's still religion. He's just invented his own, or he, not just because he's dead, but he had just invented. 
and his own version of Christianity, which is still a life centered on Christ um, for, a, for a suffering God, which isn't biblical, and for which there is no evidence, and for which even Bonhoeffer, I'm not convinced, um, strongly believed was a real thing. It's almost like a Jordan Peterson where he's, he's talking about a metaphorical substrate in some regards, not with, with that particular language. And so I have absolutely no use for Bonhoeffer's theology or anybody else's theology because I give a shit about what's real. Thank you. All right, if you want to give me a viewpoint on that. Sure. I mean, as, I know, yes. as far as the nagging feeling goes that I know a lot of people have, it, it's not anything more uh, uh, exciting to me than a great many things that society tricks us into thinking and, and feels like a part of, we all grew up with a religion and surrounded by a religion, we were all always told there is a God, your choices at first aren't whether God exists or not, it's which version of God are you going to believe in, atheism wasn't even presented to me as an option for for most of my religious life, a couple of years ago my dad who is in his 60s and should be entirely embarrassed by this, when I asked him what would change his mind about a God, he said is if, if God himself showed himself to my dad and told him he was wrong. And I was like, cool, you've said the only thing that could change your mind is something that couldn't happen if he doesn't exist, you idiot. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it, culturally, people have these things stuck in their head and they work really, really hard to keep them nagging at the back of their head. Uh, and you probably believe in lots of things that are wrong like that cracking your knuckles lead to arthritis or mm-hmm. that Maroon 5 is a good band. Yeah, uh, I'm going to give a little story that I picked up from Kid Jones, who's a rabbi, says, why did God create atheists? Have you heard that? Yes, I've heard the story. Okay. Uh, let's leave it at that then. Yeah, it's the whole Can thing about the challenge that they have and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's also very stupid, but I know when people first hear the story they think it's very cute but it still presumes that god actually exists and is very silly yeah sure. yeah well, uh, yeah. yeah thanks rich have a good one that's hey awesome. people getting that's mad it. in the uh, chat like i also am it. wrong but think that we're that sounds like, like an agnostic that sounds like an agnostic that sounds like an agnostic to me uh, either call looks more interesting to you as a way for more. We do have at least one line open. We'd love that to sounds like an adjustment to me. One that has, one that has, and and it has. Why does it say prophecies that will be fulfilled in the Torah? Well, because if this prophecy, I I have to explain, but if this prophecy came true in the way it did, maybe the prophecy about Tyre and Sidon will come true in the way. You always talk about the false prophecy of Tyre and Sidon. I want, I got one, I got one.
Jeremiah 59. Jeremiah 50, that's verse 9. That's not, that's not a win. When was this prophecy made? Uh, a few thousand years ago. Okay. When did it come true? The Gulf War, 1991. No. Then how on earth can you pretend that the it is true? Because the prophecy needs to be specific, not prone to interpretation, and answerable by a single circumstance. So, are you telling me that you found something that doesn't mention 1991 or the, or the Gulf War, and you're going to claim that, that it was fulfilled then? What are the specifics that got fulfilled? Okay, it talks about the nation of Babylon and uh, how the the heirs are the heirs of the man the mighty expert men. None of them return in vain. And for the longest time, people were saying that prophecy never happened when Babylon was destroyed by the Medes and the Persians. But then the Gulf War came along, and uh, an assembly of North nations that was North America and uh, Brit uh, Britain, all those nations and the uh, the arrows, none of them return in vain. That was uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles. Okay, I, I'm not taking your call, nor am I speaking to you, nor do I plan to have another conversation with you for the rest of the time I'm on this show. Um, I am absolutely exhausted. Either you are a monumental troll, or no. you are beyond our ability to help. Because I was very clear, in order for there to be a viable prophecy, there has to be something written down by a single set of circumstances. I am not interested in when you put your tinfoil hat on and when you start scouring around the internet, I'm not interested in how you think you found something that makes sense. That's not what prophecy is. That's not how you prove prophecy is fulfilled. It is not a reasonable endeavor. It is tinfoil hat bullshit and I'm done wasting our audience's time on it. Thanks wait, so wait, wait, wait a minute. I got proof. I, I got some... I wanted to work too... Are you afraid to address me? Thank you. Are you afraid to address me, bitch? Are you afraid to adjust me, bitch? <laughs>